Good afternoon, everyone. Daryl Kieser here, CEO of Candy Box Marketing. Thanks so much for joining us today. We've got, uh, we've got a really fun lineup. Today, we're going to be talking about the top five digital marketing trends uh, from our team. Um, at Candy Box Marketing, we are a full-service digital marketing agency. We strive to be Canada's premier digital agency. Um, when we're talking about the top five digital marketing trends, we plan this in January because things change all the time. We understand that your world is full of budgets and tactics and strategies and plans and contents and all that fun stuff. Um, but we have never as an agency, uh, honestly, never seen as much change in digital marketing as we have in the last 12 months. Uh, the cost of some type of advertising has skyrocketed. Uh, privacy rights in regards to tracking has changed a lot. Uh, different companies have adjusted their focus, including Meta. We've got ChatGPT coming in really hot. Not a full trend yet, but something that we're, we're taking a look at. And uh, short form video content has really taken over a lot of our smartphones. And so this year we are way more excited than other years because the amount of new stuff that's come out is really cool to take a look at. So during this, I want to go back. Um, I want to jump in a DeLorean, turn on the flux capacitor, go back to January 2020. This is BC before COVID, where I was giving my predictions of digital marketing for 2021 or sorry, for the rest of the year of 2020 and 2021. Uh, we all know what happened after that. And uh, I like the quote from Mike Tyson that says, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And last couple of years have been pretty interesting in regards to making um, predictions of the next year. Um, you know, the key word in most marketing plans has been to just pivot. And so we see here 2020 was at the bottom. Uh, remember the three-week break that we were all going on? Yeah, that didn't pan out uh, to be a three-week break. And then we've got 2021, where we thought everything was going to be contained in 2020, but that wasn't. We were just contained to this wonderful corner of the stairwell as we were trying to adjust our plans with different regulations and challenges. And then we've got 2022 of just pulling with less resources and challenges. And uh, we're obviously going into, and now are in, which seems strange, 2023, and we're trying to predict what is going on. So from the past, we've tried to do the best we can as an agency to prepare, to get ready, to communicate, work with our clients. Um, but today, what we want to do is we want to talk about the top five things that we see coming up in your future. So lock in at 88 miles per hour. I even wore, if you, if you can't see on camera here, I even wore my Back to the Future shirt today uh, because we are going to be taking a look at your next 12 months and trying to help you figure out how to be successful with your digital marketing efforts. So the five trends uh, are outlined here. There's no gotchas. There's no secret trends in here that we're only going to you know, show you that there's one software license for. We're going to show you five trends that you can use for your business to leapfrog your competition this year. And um, when, I, when I put these together, I, I was trying to find a common element or common letter, and I couldn't. So I just really kind of added a number of C words on the left-hand side for fun. So we've got creative in regards to innovation. We've got content with short-form video content being the primary driver of content in this next year. We've got creators, uh, so working with influencers and content creators. We've got calories. Okay, calories. People are asking me a lot of questions about calories. Yes, I was striving for a keyword, but trust me, I'm going to make this one count and you're going to absolutely love what we do, uh, what we talk about in terms of your customers' calories and making it easy. Uh, and lastly, but not least, we have to talk about computing in regards to uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, AI and ML, chat GPT, and all those wonderful things that have been completely overtaking our newsfeed in the last couple weeks here. So starting off here, we're going to talk about creativity and, and innovation. Now, creativity and innovation is needed because when we take a look at social media, this, this chart that I show you up on the screen, this has been the same for 10 years, okay? As an agency or as a company, you create content. And content's only job, its only job is to create conversations, all right, conversations, reactions, reshares, reposts. If, if you're not creating conversations, your social media 
like just, it just flatlines. It doesn't do anything because it's social first, right? Social media, if you're not social, if you're not getting feedback, if you're not getting shares, click throughs, um, reactions, comments, all those things, it's gone. All right. So content's job is to create conversations, conversations, develop relationships and relationships for any company leads to revenue. So when we're talking about content, the thing we're noticing with content and social media is that we now need to think about how to be more creative with the same content that we had last year. So if we're thinking of the content that we used to put something up on Shutterstock or some, you know, let's just get a bunch of stock assets and put it out there. We now want to take those those frameworks, those plans, and get more creative because it is getting harder and harder to get noticed online, all right? Your, your advertisements, um, a lot of companies' advertisements have created ad blindness where we don't see it anymore. So this is just a quick example here of Apple and how they became creative in this last year in terms of their computers. So this is our video of my iPhone as I was shopping for a new computer uh, about two months ago. And as I was going down the website, I clicked on this little AR button, augmented reality. Um, in this uh, AR feature, I was able to really take a look at the computer. I was able to kind of like understand it a little bit better in regards to its dimensions. And then I, I was standing in our studio in Oakville and I could just put it right there on the desk, position it where it you know, would naturally fit on the desk and it's using augmented reality and machine learning to figure out how to do this. And then I can actually go and take a look at this. Now, the funny part about this is as I was filming it, I was getting close to the computer, but not too close because I didn't want to bump my camera. And it wasn't even there. So yes, I'm a complete idiot even when it comes to augmented reality. My point is, is that Apple became creative and said, you know what, people want to understand what they're buying. As we're buying things on, more and more things online, we want to see what it looks like, not just to even increase the conversion ratio, but to decrease the amount of returns. So if you're in a high volume e-commerce business, you want to make sure that the people know what they're going to get delivered to their house. And so, so augmented reality, uh, we believe, is that thing that is setting companies apart when they're doing anything online to do with actual products. Now, yes, I'm going to get to B2B sales and online selling and all that stuff as well, too. But, but AR, we think that there is going to be a huge push towards better experiences with augmented reality in the next few months. Um, now, I, I do put in brackets here, not VR, okay, because everybody's been talking about, you know, virtual reality and meta. And at this point as an agency, I don't see VR um, being widely accepted in the consumer market, right? If you walk into a house, you're going to see phones and TVs. You're not going to see a, a VR headsets out and people regularly interacting. I, I, I think it will be a part of our future. I don't think that it's right now, but that is our opinion. Um, in terms of uh, your content plan, it is still about good ideas. Okay, It is still about good ideas. It's not just about producing content for the sake of producing content. It is about producing content that is actually going to convert. And I've used this uh, example once before in a webinar. So if you've seen this, don't worry. The rest of the, this, uh, this webinar is 100% original. But I want to talk about the Cybertruck again. All right, the Cybertruck, uh, this wonderful vehicle made out of uh, stainless steel that is kind of like the love child in between, like the you know the 2010 Batmobile and a 1981 DeLorean merged into this uh, Tesla machine of gorgeous lines and interesting features. And it, part of this uh, release that happened now two and a half years ago was they were talking about the windows being bulletproof glass. Now I'm a Canadian, so I have no idea why you need a bulletproof glass uh, truck, but I, either way, it was very interesting. And so on stage, they, they brought out the truck and they took this steel ball and they whipped it as hard as they could at the window. And this is what happened. All right. Afterwards, Elon Musk, after he swore a little bit into the microphone, brought out another steel ball, picked it up, and whipped it out the other window. So that didn't work very well. Now, a lot of people saw this as the biggest um, uh, mistake uh, issue with like, you know, doing a live appearance for a new car. But what happened next was really interesting. This was their social media plan. All they did was invite influencers, content creators, just regular people to come and attend the event. And when this steel ball hit that window, this happened. 
that steel ball was heard around the world within hours. The share button was shared over and over and over again, and so everybody saw the truck overnight. And what did that result in? Is that resulted in 146,000 trucks being sold in six hours. Over the next few days, um, we saw that uh, you know 146,000 were sold, but then Elon Musk also puts it out there because he is Elon Musk, that uh, there's no advertising or paid endorsement. So what he was doing was he was using a creative concept of content creators, well, uh, that's strange, creative concept of content creators to create really good content that people want to share. Now, I personally believe they broke the window on purpose. We're never gonna fully understand if that was on purpose or not. It's not like the car didn't work, but this was a piece of content that was really interesting that made people share it. So my, our big question to companies this year is not just like, are you taking a quick Instagram on your Friday morning meetings at your staff meeting? No, what is your content plan for this year? What are the things that you're working on that is going to be shareable, uh, be something that people are going to convert off of? And we've got to plan these things out. It doesn't just happen by chance. Now, you may be saying, Daryl, okay, that's great, but what about business-to-business -business sales? So glad that you asked. So business-to-business -business sales has been changing over these last few years. We've seen that uh, for B2B, uh, email campaigns is getting harder to get noticed. Facebook pages are dying. Twitter is it has a declining membership base, a lot of Twitter quitters. So what is working? Over this last year and in this next year, we've bet on LinkedIn. Now, I use LinkedIn personally uh, for B2B sales. I run an agency. We connect with different people um, around the greater Toronto area and across Canada to talk about their businesses. And so what I do in LinkedIn is we come up with different searches. So as you can see in my search here, I say, okay, certain number of employees, certain titles in the GTA, and then we create a list. Now, in that list, we'll send out qualifying messages that says, hey, Dima, I'm looking to connect with 50 local business leaders for a Zoom coffee, tea, espresso, et cetera, in 50 days. Are you in? Once again, going back to the area of creativity, you do not want to send that generic message of, hey, I want to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. We've been seeing this message for like 15 years, okay? This message is almost going to get a driver's license. It doesn't work, okay? Never, ever do this. And sometimes you know that as somebody sends this message to you, they're not just wanting to connect, they want to spam you. And so their message looks a little like a Trojan horse. Um, and so we need to understand as companies that when we put this out there, a lot of these things feel like they're going unanswered and that that is for a very good reason. And the reason is that we've created ad blindness and so it doesn't work. So what we're doing is creating tailored messaging experience based on who the person is, based on who you are and something interesting, like just something creative. So as an example, once somebody connects with me in on LinkedIn, I'll send them this message. Hey, Chris, thanks for connecting. I was looking to have a coffee, espresso, or even tea uh, with one person per day in my agency studio in Oakville in Q1. Our office is right at QEW and Ford Drive. During these meetings, I'm looking to look more about your journey and provide any value I can. I run one of the fast growing digital agencies, et cetera. As you can see here, this is like a bit of a tailored, yes, it is can, but a bit of a tailored message towards this person. I establish credibility. I establish geographically where I am. And even at the bottom there, I talk about having a, you know, enterprise or a, what is it? Like a commercial grade Nespresso machines and unlimited free candy, which just gets the conversation going. Now we launched this campaign and my hope was to um, uh, reach 50 CEOs in 50 days, all right? And I was gonna give it like two months to kind of work out. Well, that plan failed miserably because instead of that, um, we actually reached 540 CEOs and I met with personally over a period of seven months, all right? So we shot past the target. Now. If you take a look at this in, in our, our, our stats here, you say, well, Daryl, that seems like a lot of work. You know, that seems like a lot of work to curate messages and everything, but all these things can actually be automated. Uh, at CandyBox, we have tools uh, here that connect with LinkedIn's API to send out automated messages, and we can send out to about 100 tailored messages per week towards our target audience. So before, when we're trying to you know, work on different digital marketing plans of outreach and you know, being on LinkedIn and being active, 
we were able to connect with 540 people in seven months, which was typically, I think it was, it came down to about three or four per day. That was a lot of coffee that I drank, but it was a fantastic experience. Second trend here uh, today is content, short form video content. So when we're, when we're looking at content in 2023, over the last couple of years, it's been a lot of like link in images, link in images, blog writing, SEO content. And some of that stuff still does work very well. But during the pandemic, something very strange happened. We started scroll bombing TikTok. TikTok emerged out um, of the pandemic time. People were at home and people started just consuming more and more content because we were sitting at home on our couches and sometimes we'd reach the bowels of Netflix or our YouTube feeds and we were looking for something else. So TikTok came in and it introduced really short form video content. You didn't even need an account to start watching videos. Overnight, this happened. All right, so TikTok like started exploding. Uh, all the companies started noticing, okay, short form video content is what people want to watch. So Instagram came out with reels and started really competing with TikTok's uh, same offering. And then YouTube came out with shorts. And so right now there's this huge race out there for reels. There's a huge race for being known as the company to show you short form video content. Now, in terms of the uh, what I would call the like, like you know the product life cycle, uh, short form video content right now is extremely exciting because we're actually still at what's called the early majority phase of this network really getting out there. So when you you know when your your platform when TikTok has you know only a million users, they're in the innovators. Only a couple people are in it. Then you go through early adopters and start seeing people like pick up the tool and start using it. And then we see this chasm, okay? Now the chasm usually means, is this company going to live or die? A lot of people thought TikTok was gonna go under and then it was just a fad. This has happened before, by the way. There was a company uh, called Vine that did this. I think it was about like eight or nine years ago. Uh, and so we see these trends coming out over and over again. But um, all marketers agree that this is now in the early majority phase, which means that is building traction. A lot of people are now on it. And when you, when you like find out that like your mom or your dad are now on TikTok, you realize, okay, now this is mainstream, right? Whereas like Facebook uh, pages and Twitter and stuff like that are in the late majority and even into the laggards. If you're just signing up for Twitter today, you're certainly a laggard. So this is a very exciting opportunity if you're looking to get into content, getting into short form video content. Um, even recently, Google publicly admitted that TikTok was competing with search engine results. Okay, TikTok is now seen as a competitor to Google. And the reason why is if you were to search for, you know, lunch around Oakville, and this is just like me sitting here wondering what lunch places are around me. Well, on TikTok and Instagram, um, that gives it me an engaging platform where I'm able to take a look at videos from curators that are just recent showing a real experience as opposed to just a download of thousands of businesses. Now, on the right-hand side here, I so I searched lunch uh, or food Oakville on all three platforms. We can see TikTok. We can see Instagram, both very engaging. Uh, and then on the uh, last one, I just see YouTube. They haven't really integrated their shorts yet. They haven't created that full experience that would make sense. So it's not really winning. So right now, Google is trying to play catch up. And I think they're going to, to these other two networks. YouTube has been fighting back with something called shorts. All right. And not actual shorts, just, you know, short videos. That's what the, their brand is for short form video content. And uh, here is a quick preview of uh, a video that my daughter made with her pencil crayons recently that got 11,000 views. All right, so what is this? So this was a video, my, my daughter decided to buy very expensive pencil crayons, and so we're trying to work on a sponsorship deal for her so that she can keep buying these ridiculously expensive pencil crayons. And so in that, she's been experimenting with YouTube Shorts. Now the fun thing about Shorts is that because it's so new, because there's so many users that have been like integrating this in their YouTube viewing, there's a lot of people out there to actually view these videos. Uh, so it is right now, it is becoming easier 
to become viral. So this one video that she put out there about her simple pencil crayons got 11,000 views and she only has like 100 subscribers. So right now in short form video content, there is more demand than supply, which means that more your content as it goes out there, if you are posting short form video content that is engaging and creative, you're getting more virality out of each post. In terms of content creation, um, companies are also looking at producing more content on a more regular basis that shows what they're doing. This is an example of a project we recently did with Beaver Tales showing one of their locations in Milton, Ontario. All right, I'm going to stop it there. All right, so short form video content. If you do not have a short form video content on Instagram or on TikTok, and it's just like old images and stock stuff, um, you, you, you just need to change your plans. Um, these networks are pushing shorts. They're pushing um, under 60 second videos on each of these platforms. And it is now an essential part of our marketing mix because of how customers are watching it. Uh, item number three, creators, okay, working with influencers. Now, when I say influencers, people think celebrities, people think Justin Bieber, people, you know, you start thinking of the, the, the models and stuff, putting out things on their Instagram and getting millions and millions of likes. And the reality is that is just a portion of what I talk about with influencers. Every single person on social media today is an influencer, period. You are influencing your friend group who influences other friend groups, et cetera. And so there's just, everybody's an influencer. We're just at varying degrees of influence here. And um, I bring up influencer marketing because uh, we take a look at the top marketing channels for 2022. And uh, influencer is the one that has been gaining the most ground year over year. So we see number one is social media. Number two is website, blog, email, content. Most people have this as part of their marketing mix. It makes sense to have a website and blog and email. That's, that's table six. We get that. But then all of a sudden we see that 30% of the 30% uh, 30 top marketing channel for 2022 was influencers. And not a lot of companies have a grasp of even how to do this. So when we're talking about working with influencers, we're, we're talking about working with people that have trust in existing networks. Okay. So it's not about you having to become an influencer all the time. Every brand that's out there, that's like, well, I want to become an influencer and then promote my product. And it's like, yes, that can work, but why don't you go work with all the people that already have the networks? If you're selling dog treats, you know, and, and you're starting with like inbox zero or zero followers, why don't you just go out there and have a collaboration with existing people that have that entire market of dog food and treats and just dog accessories, uh, and they may have hundreds of thousands of people already waiting to see your product. Now, the reason why this works so well is it says, and this is a, a stat by uh, Spotify, that 61% of online consumers trust influencer recommendation where it's about 38% for branded social media content. And when you have more trust, you have more conversions, you have more conversions, you have more sales. And so you can get a pretty good ROI if you have the right influencer strategy. Um, this is an example we had with a company called Inex Gear. Uh, Inex Gear during the pandemic had really fashionable, uh, uh, reusable, washable face masks and bandanas. And we worked with a number of influencers to promote the brand. So we see Fancy Honeybee. She's got 69,000 followers. We see uh, official Claudia Christian at 16,000. We've got Vanessa at 2,000. And down below, you can see there's different levels of influencers. You've got your nanos, your micros, your powers, your mega, and your celebrities, right? So in terms of working with influencers, it doesn't mean that you're trying to get some crazy celebrity endorsement. You may just start with a group of 10 nano influencers and see the results and move from there. Um, in regards to uh, other customers, just an example, uh, Turtle Jacks, 
Um, in the last year, we are working with a number of different influencers. This is uh, one example here of Champagne Ange. Uh, they're advertising their tacos to go special. And uh, Champagne Ange has 148,000 followers and has a huge market uh, in the GTA that are actually following her accounts. And so it makes sense for somebody like Turtle Jacks that doesn't have this massive online following to work with local people to show people what Turtle Jacks food looks like when they bring it home. Next item, calories. All right, I know I raised some eyebrows when I said calories, but spare me a minute to try to explain why I used this word, all right? Calories is about making it easy for your customers to become a customer. And you say, well, you know, it's on their website. Okay, valid, it, it could be on your website or they could visit your location. But uh, take a look at this, um, uh, from time.com, there was a scientific report saying your brain uses 20% of the calories that you output every day, okay? So 20% of, you know, your, your brain is, I think it's uh, 8% of your total body mass, but it uses, um, uh, it uses 20% of your calories. So in this, your average is, your, your brain is burning 400 calories per day. And it's doing a lot of different things. It's controlling the body, but it's also in the area of decision-making, right? Thought, learning, education. That's why you start binging on snacks when you're studying really hard or cramming for a test or getting some caffeine back there. You need your brain to actually produce and to do a lot of things and to use energy. Now, if we go really deep into science for a minute, and no, I'm not a psychologist and I don't major in this stuff, but every, from everything that we've read about user experience, our brains are always trying to find ways to um, automate tasks or to make things easier on us, okay? And so, you know, we, we choose, you know, similar things every single day. We have routines and we try to actually push all the stuff into our subconscious so we just can do stuff subconsciously so that we don't need to use our brains to burn all these calories, to do all these things. Why? Because in the core of our human experience and, and stuff, we try to make it easy so that we don't have to like eat as much food and gather as much, et cetera, to survive. So yes, part of people being on your website, subconsciously your brain is saying, I don't wanna do a lot of work because I'm working on survival. It's one of the most basic instincts that we have. So 400 calories per day, what does that mean? That is equivalent to a 25 minute run or a one hour walk. That's all the energy that your brain is using every single day, which is nuts. So how does this, do, uh, how does this relate to your digital marketing plans in 2023? Well, I wanna show you TD. Uh, I went on the TD website today, and just as an example here, I clicked on personal checking accounts. Right away, I'm presented with three different options for personal checking accounts. First thing is they had an issue with their website. How many of us have issues with the website and we don't even know it? And, and these small issues, it's not preventing me from going forward, but it's creating hard work. So now I'm trying to like look at the screen and going, okay, well, what, what reward is this? What, how do I compare these three? And, and the, the first two, I love this, the first two says special offer. So I'm like, great, well, what special offer do I need? Okay, now I'm starting to read through and not all the things line up perfectly. So I'm now needing to like do like, a, um, like an eye tracing and saying, okay, here's a fee here, here's a fee here. So it's making me work to try to understand how to sign up for a personal checking account. Every single time you're try you, you, you put a task or a major decision or a difficult decision onto a customer to figure out online, your brain is saying, okay, you know what? They just look at it and go, I need to, I'm gonna need to do some work here. Before you even do the work, you're gonna say, I'm gonna have to commit two minutes to reading this all through and deciding what is the best personal checking account for me and this is going to be challenging. So what does the brain do? It tries to find an easy way. It tries to find the way out and sometimes the way out is in another tab like with Tangerine. So I take a look at Tangerine, and just by the way, we don't work for either of these companies, just using it as a, as a great example. I go onto Tangerine's website, they're known for a good user experience and design, so shout out to the, the web team at Tangerine. And then I take a look at this, no fee daily checking account. And the first thing that they did here is on a marketing side, they decided, you know what, let's not give people three, actually TD 
Officially, they have five options, but I didn't scroll down. Let's not give people five options on getting a checking account. Let's give them one option. And I don't know if later on I get to choose something, but it's just like, here's the account up here. There's the card, right? This is, this is the end. This is the endorphin that is going to be released when you know that you're going to complete the task that you set out to do, which was to get a debit card. Here's the fee. Here's the interest rate. And then here's the call to action. Left, center, right. Simple. So much better. So your brain, if you're taking a look at Tangerine and if you're taking a look at TD, what is the better checking account? To be honest, I don't know. It could be TD. They could have lower fees over time or have a better deal or better savings rate. But the brain is saying, I'm exhausted. I, I, I don't really want to work for this. And so let's just go towards something that's easy. Let's go towards something that feels good, that has a clear path, a clear call to action. And this isn't like a trend for 2023. This is like our human brain. So what happens over the last number of years is that over time, companies are getting easier and easier to work with online. But what about your company? Is it easier than your competitors? Because if your competitors have made it this much easier, then all of a sudden you're fighting to get ahead. You're fighting to get those conversion ratios. Now, I want to bring up Avatar. And besides, you know, talking about the logo and them choosing just Papyrus for a very simple logo here, I want to tell you that, uh, that Avatar, which I'm going to have to see this weekend, it's a pretty big commitment. It is three hours and 12 minutes, all right? Three hours and 12 minutes of watching a story. But movies release endorphins, and they don't require us to think. They require no critical thinking. That's the beauty about movies. You could just sit there in a dark room, just shoving you know, popcorn in your mouth, and it tells your brain everything that it needs to know in a fashion that we understand. All right? So I will gladly spend three hours and 12 minutes watching this crazy movie about the sea creature blue people, and I'm having a great time, and I will pay to be here. But spending 30 seconds on a website trying to figure out which checking account is the best, which really could impact my future, my finances, the bank that I have a relationship with, the amount of savings that I have, my investments, and all those things, seems exhausting. So even if it's just like, well, Daryl, it's only a matter of 30 seconds, and they're going to understand it, Think about Avatar, all right? A three hour and 12 minute movie that people are flooding and paying $20 per ticket to see. And you know, signing up for a checking account right now in our example, we can all agree that let's just go with the easy one. Let's just go with the orange guys, the tangerines. In regards to websites, we need to make them simple. And then we need to make them simpler. All right. You know the quote, if we, I had more time, I'd write you a shorter letter. If marketing agencies had more time, we would build you simpler websites. We take a look at Wealth Simple, right? Which is a great website that has, you know, automated bidding and um, uh, what is it? Robo advisors for investing. And we take a look at their website. Now they do a ton of stuff. They do RSPs and investments and stocks. They do crypto. They do all these things. But take a look at their homepage. Do money right. Okay, this would make like my like grade 12 English teacher absolutely freak out. Okay, do money right. That's your marketing. But you have to understand like I don't want to spend a long time reading through different investment portfolios. Do money right. That makes sense. And then it says forward, th uh, forward thinking financial tools trusted by 2.5 million Canadians accreditation. What's the third thing? Get started. I don't even know what this means. But I know that if I click the button, it's going to help me along my journey of investing. We need to make things simpler to lower the caloric output of our customers so that they convert. Marathon fasteners and hardware. This is a customer that we worked with a number of years ago, and this was their website. They have, I think, about 9,000 products in the website, so it's complex. You could probably say, you know what, we don't have 9,000 products. That's, that's a lot of products here. And so out of 9,000 products, they've got all these drop-downs and menus and pictures and all that stuff. And so all we did was we just redesigned the website to look better, to function better, and we made it so that you're one click away from any branded product, right? If you go into the mega menu, feel free to go on to marathonhardware.com to get a live representation 
same products, same business, same prices. We were just making it easier. Now, I can't go into our clients' results and everything, but um, like they, they experience like an extreme increase of online sales and a decrease of customer service, which is a cost to them just by design. We are lowering, lowering the caloric output of our customers and saying, hey, if you want to buy some handles and levers and pull knobs and stuff, we are going to make it really easy for you. If you make it easy you're going to get more customers. It's that simple. Last item here, and after this last item, I'm gonna be opening up for some Q&A and uh, to take your questions here and, uh, and hopefully answer as much as I can live uh, in this environment. And I've got other team members here that may be able to provide this answer. Um, so the last one is computing, all right? Now, if you have not been living under a rock for the last two weeks, you have heard or seen or even tried out ChatGPT, all right? ChatGPT is, is really like one of the first, I would say it's one of the first like customer usable chat functions that uses AI uh, that's accessible to everyone. Um, and just for fun, um, I've been using chat uh, AI, or sorry, chat GPT over this last bit uh, to generate different content and different responses. Um, this is going to be a huge game changer uh, in this next year, but we haven't seen it fully evolved yet. So we're not advertising on chat GPT yet. Um, we're not like using it to um, uh, you know, uh, to, to really go beyond in, um, in actually like, uh, sorry, using it as a network or connections or users or any of that stuff. But take a look at this. Um, I, I quickly put into chat GPT top five digital marketing trends. Now I'm very happy to say that we agreed on three of them. All right. And PS, this is taking data from 2021 and bringing it live. And so it's 2023. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to update chat GPT and make it a little bit smarter. Um, so, you know, taking a look at this for ideas is really interesting. Um, I wrote a blog uh, this week with ChatGPT. I wanted to talk about, you know, I told ChatGPT, write an intro paragraph about creating a brand guideline for an emerging technology company, all right? And it wrote me a 500-word blog. Um, I did keyword research just to show you and just saying, okay, you know what, we're, we're changing our Google ads campaigns. And so let's get some inspiration, not, you know, it's not finishing our jobs here, but let's get some inspiration where I'm saying generate a list of keywords, focus on companies looking for a digital marketing agency. And it spit out a list. This is only 20. It gave me 50. And a lot of these we are using already, but some of them we decided, okay, you know what, we can add these in to our campaign. Um, AI, in our opinion, it's just it's just getting started. Like ChatGPT is one of those consumer products that is a, a pilot. Um, it is useful for for doing different things, building code, coming up with ideas and scripts. Um, and so, in the next year, we're going to see how this is going to start moving into our consumer products in marketing and even in terms of search. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think this this is going to be one of the biggest rivals for Google uh, coming up because people are used to asking Google questions. And over this last week, I kept finding myself going to ChatGPT and using AI to scour the web for a question as opposed to just performing a Google search. So I would say watch out for this one. But in this, um, machine learning in artificial intelligence has already been alive and well in digital marketing. This is, this is nothing completely new. This is just a really cool public tool. So as an example, uh, programmatic advertising um, can help do these types of things today. So if somebody is looking to travel from Toronto to Orlando um, and, you know, I start booking the ticket, but then I decide, you know what, I'm not, I'm not sure if I want to book this ticket. And then I go off the website. We can actually use programmatic tools to then take that data and attract that person back to our website. All right, so this exists today. This is called programmatic and it works to really generate a profile around individual people and we can customize advertisements based on where they are in their consumer journey or based on who they are as a person. Um, this was a, a funny uh, screenshot I got last night uh, by a, a friend of mine and they were, they were attending a webinar on chat GBT and then because of that, on the page, it showed up an ad for Candy Box Marketing because we're talking about chat GPT and branding and all that different stuff. And so 
it brought an advertisement to them on this website, owned by ChatGPT Pro. And so we take a look at this and, and this stuff is already in motion. It is already working. It is already working incredibly well for curating individual audiences that are looking for a certain experience. Um, AI is also alive and well in marketing automation software. Uh, we work with tons of different automated uh, softwares over this next year. We're focusing more on HubSpot. And, uh, and, and programs like HubSpot can, can create different AI type experiences based on what people like, what they open, what they do, how they interact with your campaign. All this stuff can actually be put into automation as opposed to you doing it manually. So going to be uh, opening up for questions in the next two minutes. But, uh, you know, my question to you is this is a lot of change. Uh, these are a lot of new tools um, new methodologies, new strategies that a lot of companies don't have experience in doing. Um, as an agency, we've had to completely revolutionize um, how we do marketing to help the, the changes, or sorry, to help support the, uh, the, the changing landscape of digital marketing. Um, we understand that as an agency, uh, we have a number of services. And if you're just staring at services, it's sometimes really hard to understand what you need or what uh, what thing is going to work for your conversions. But um, just to let you know, as an agency, we're ready. Uh, we're ready for these discussions. Uh, in regards to creative, we have 40 plus digital marketers. We're all in house. We don't outsource. And we are a creative agency that can tackle projects. Um, except for Jim. Uh, this is a, a, a zoom in to Jim. I don't really know what he does here. That's just a joke. We love you, Jim. Um, in terms of uh, content, uh, we have a full production studio S standing here right now. Uh, we've got um, you know podcasting, short form video content, long form video content, content creation, photography, editing, all that stuff. We actually uh, can do on site with your company. Um, we also work with creators. Uh, we help organize influencer campaigns and organizing all these people talking about your business and verifying that they do. Um, to cut down on calories, we've got a user experience team that takes a look at all the complex things that your users need to do, and we create maps and user journeys so that it makes sense for end users what page they're going to next, and hopefully we are increasing conversions. And lastly, in regards to computing, we do marketing automation. We do programmatic uh, machine learning within, um, within different programs. And so in terms of this next few years, we understand that a lot of people, uh, this, this may have hit you like a ton of bricks today, but if you need help, even if you just want a discussion about what is your next steps, we offer uh, free, uh, no obligation discussions about your digital marketing um, with a lot of our team members here. Uh, we just want to speak with you. So I'm gonna open up for some Q&A, um, but if you're looking to uh, take uh, advantage of that offer and you wanna talk about your marketing in this next year and what you need to focus on, uh, there's gonna be a link dropped in the chat uh, right now uh, from Mafuz and, uh, and feel free to book my calendar anytime and I'd be happy to have a 30 minute uh, free call with you and talk about these changing trends. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to uh, invite Mafuz to bring up any Q&A, uh, any questions that people have had during this presentation, and we'll try to get you answered here before uh, time is up here. Daryl, that was a great presentation. And um, to regarding how many questions are here, how much time do you have? Because there is a ton of question. But I've been busy at work in the back end, and I've grouped as many of the questions as I can. To, and what I did is I divided it up by every one of the trends that you've addressed. So we'll go through it one at a time. I want to start with this general question that I think was uh, really well asked in the chat here. Out of the five trends, uh, do they vary for industry? Can you talk a little bit towards the considerations that are important depending on what industry that you're in? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, they, they, so yes, they do vary by, by industry. Um, you know, the, the easiest way to slice and dice it is B2B versus B2C. Um, so uh, for example, if you're, I don't know, uh, if you're selling uh, ball bearings to seven different manufacturers across North America, you may not want to try to do a TikTok influencer campaign. Um, you know, that's just a terrible joke, but it's just like to illustrate, like these things are very different. Um, but uh, the, the stuff that I, I think that impacts everybody, and let me just quickly go back to my notes here. Um, I, I believe that um, your overall user experience 
from your brand, uh, your online uh, persona, like your, your website, is typically the hub of a many spoke model. Um, so I would say that that one, that one is everywhere. Uh, whether you're in selling investments, uh, acquiring companies, um, selling waste solutions or selling cupcakes, websites um, are, are a critical component of these plans and all the other items I would say um, can be modified based on what you're going after. I want to move into LinkedIn, which was trend number one that you went heavy on. How do you automate LinkedIn connections? And a follow-up question, is, there a, is it simple to drag and drop or do you need skill sets like coding in order to be able to do that? Yeah, so um, uh, LinkedIn automation, uh, LinkedIn tries to have people not automate their program. So there's nothing native in LinkedIn that allows you to do it. Uh, we as an agency um, have a tool uh, that does this for us. And so we actually program this tool um, to work with an existing LinkedIn account to make these connections. Uh, and the limit right now is 100 connections per month uh, that we're working on. So, um, so no, they don't do it natively. Um, agencies like ours have tools to do this. Um, and there's, uh, there's uh, barriers that we put on it so we don't get it marked as spam. Next question, very important one. And shout out to Kelly for this great question. What type of coffee does Daryl endorse? <laughs> Coffee. Okay. Um, I, I love Nespresso. Um, double Nespresso, like a double espresso uh, pod is my go-to. I think it's called Scuro or Chiaro. There are two different types. I love it. And so we have a crazy, absolutely crazy Nespresso machine here at the office. It has so many features. Um, I could do an entire webinar about it. So Kelly, if you're ever in the area, come by and I will introduce you to my favorite machine. He's not lying. It's probably the reason why we have as much energy on this webinar as we do. So big shout out to Nespresso there. Um, let's move into short form videos. What type of short form type videos do you recommend for B2B businesses? What are some examples that you could give? Um, and is it better to produce on all platforms? You know, you talked about TikTok, YouTube shorts, reels on Instagram, or should you go in all in on one and get good at it first? Yeah. Oh man. Two really good questions that th those are so good. I actually should have included them in my presentation. Um, for B2B shorts, um, e there's a couple different, uh, ideas I can put out there. Uh, one thing that B2B is doing a lot these days, uh, for shorts is, uh, customer testimonials or employee testimonials. All right. So just very quick snippets of, uh, affirming what you actually do and why people choose you over somebody else. So I'm talking like talking head, people just doing stuff really quickly. Uh, people love that. Uh, in a B2B environment, a lot of times you're, you know, you're, it may not be just physical product that you're doing, um, but that that works, um, you know, that's just my, my quick answer. And uh, and PS, after this, I'm gonna ask uh, Mafuz what he thinks, because he also builds tons of brand strategies. Um, other videos that you can consider is if you've got large operations, um, everybody's a bit curious about, um, you know, what's behind the scenes. And sh so if you've got like a manufacturing plant showing that, if you've got a customer, uh, I don't know, putting out fresh vegetables that you guys just delivered, show that, um, showing the heart and soul behind an organization and kind of like the whole, how it's made behind the scenes, I think works really well for B2B. And it shows people that you're not just another commodity, you're real people, uh, providing value to your customers. Second question, should you go on every network or should you start with one? My recommendation is most companies is start with one and, and choose one that makes sense for you. So if you're more B2B, you may choose YouTube uh, because that also appears more in search. Um, if you're more in consumer products and electronics, beauty, food, fashion, uh, I would be le leaning more towards TikTok and second Instagram. And so it's a little bit about finding out um, who you're marketing to, and then building a strategy in one network. Once you see that network taking off, then you can start looking at expanding to, to other networks uh, because you don't want all of your eggs in one basket. You know, there was companies years ago that, you know, went all in on Vine and it's like Vine disappears and then your audience is gone. So it's good to expand after you find measurable success in one network. Big shout out to Dana there. I think on cue, she said behind the scenes as you verbalized it. So that was pretty cool. But the behind the scenes piece is, is defi definitely a big one for B2B. For every piece of content that you produce, it's worth thinking about what are the extra content pieces that we can collect from behind the scenes. Daryl right now is in front of a camera on the other side of this multimedia room. And behind him, we literally have our videographer, Joel, filming behind the scenes with his phone as we speak. So 
being able to really squeeze more juice out of every opportunity of content that you produce, I think is a, a, a great way to produce a multimedia. Daryl, I'm gonna move into influencers and a couple great questions here. First and foremost, can you walk us through the type of conversation and agreements that happen in signing an influencer to promote your products and services? And can you also talk a little bit about how well you found the user generated content to be consumed on the other side by the customer? So in terms of finding agreements with influencers, um, most people are dealing with like smaller micro influencers or uh, nano influencers. And that's, that's pretty easy. You reach out to them on social media, they, they know what they're doing already. Um, you tell them what the deal is, uh, like what your ex expectations there are on, on either side. And it's very important not just to do this flippantly, like not just to send out your product to a whole bunch of people and hoping that they post it because they could post the wrong thing. Um, they can speak of, of it. Let's just say if you, you've got a product um, that is geared towards um, you know, adults, but then you start using it with kids, it's like, wow, that's not our market. That's not what we want to show. And so I would say you actually need an influencer package to send them to say, here's our expectation for this type of compensation. And the compensation could be really anything. It could just start with free product um, all the way up to getting paid um, or, or doing some type of affiliate uh, model deal where they're getting a link. And so it depends. Now on the nano influencers, it's a lot easier, but you still have to give them direction. Um, what results have we seen in working with influencers? It's incredible. Uh, it is incredible when all of a sudden you see like a rising star where they don't have a big network, but all of a sudden it, you know, it, it does create a flurry of sales. Um, you know, even people with three or 4,000 followers, uh, if they're active with their community and people really trust them when they endorse something, it's endorsed. Like it's, it's, it's out there. Uh, and you think about products that have a longer LTV lifetime value than, than some. So if you're, uh, I'm just trying to pick an example that we, um, uh, if, if you, you're selling deodorant, like a, a natural deodorant, and you get somebody out there that, that really endorses and saying that I use it, the consumers there, if you can pick up 100 customers that are now going to be buying this deodorant every month, it's like that's, that's got a really high return on investment there because you're changing perceptions. It's not just an advertisement. So um, I, I think working with influencers has a huge return on investment. And I like the, um, the breakdown of it. You used to just be celebrities that can endorse stuff. And now that money is being filtered through towards individual contributors that are really providing great content. Daryl, my last set of questions, and um, I, I almost don't know what to ask here because there's tons of questions that came around AI and chat GPT. Um, and if there's any takeaway that I have from reading the chat today is that this is a very, very hot topic and a lot of people want to learn more about it. Um, the one that I saw that was reoccurring was how using chat GPT type content is going to affect your SEO and your Google search rankings. And I, and I think, Daryl, what, what I've been seeing on my end is a, a lot of um, pushback from these search engines saying, hey, we're going to actually find ways to know that this was created by an AI and maybe not reward it as well. Can you just give your thoughts around what you're seeing here with content being produced on one end and how it's working with, our, with the marketing trends of today? Yeah, so uh, I, I think it's too early to tell um, how it's going to impact SEO. Like right now, there is a concern that all this content is going to balloon. Like we can create content faster than we ever can before. Like put in a sentence into chat GPT and all of a sudden it's out there. Um, there's also concerns around um, copyright of who actually owns that, that idea and that content, um, which chat GPT is actually looking at how they can somewhat um, ver uh, digitally watermark what they put out there to be, to be caught later on and, and the question of who owns it. And so I think like most things, it's going to um, it's going to go through an evolution of the next two years and it may get a little bit messy uh, on the SEO front. Um, I think for companies that get a jump on it right now, it can really help you leapfrog your competition. But it, it may be only a period of time until uh, search engines start kind of clamping down on what's seen as just computer generated content. Now. You know, the funny conversation I had with my wife last night was she was like, well, you know what? I like your writing, uh, you know, like, so are you going to have this thing right for you? And I'm saying, no, 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 I'm going to I'm going to let it do all the legwork and then I'm just going to customize it like I'm going to make it more for my voice. Um, on that note, AI is a uh, as a uh, what would I call it? like it's an ever increasing algorithm 
so it can get faster and faster. And so if it starts to consume your writing, then it's going to know how to write for you. So I think there's going to be this kind of crazy race in between technology versus technology, you know, like some type of 2023 uh, digital rock'em sock'em type uh, technology war in between these two. And to be honest, I don't actually have predictions of what's going to, to happen first because um, what chat GPT has done in the last month, I don't think anybody saw coming. And so uh, I'm very curious to see how this, this year is going to play out. Daryl, thank you so much for your time. I, I think I have more time, more questions than we have time. And I want to use this as a last opportunity to encourage anyone that may have any questions or wants to dive in deeper with thoughts around any of the five trends that we talked about, whether it's from Daryl or the 40 members at Candy Box, uh, please use that link that we dropped in the chat to book time with Daryl and he'll bring in the, the necessary resources to talk further about it, depending on what your topic is on. But Daryl, thank you for your, for your time. Um, any ending remarks to wrap up the webinar? You know, you gave five incredible things to lean towards for 2023. Um, final remarks to wrap it up for the day. Yeah. Uh, good luck, everyone. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting year of marketing. If you were to use even just one of these things and focus on it really, really well, you can have a fantastic year and get ahead of your competition. Um, please do uh, just uh, you know search Candy Box Marketing on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be posting this video afterwards. And uh, if you've got questions here that weren't answered, uh, when the video comes out within the next week, feel free to just post your question there. And my personal commitment is I will answer every single question that is on our YouTube uh, comments list there. So head over to YouTube, subscribe to us. Feel free to also find us on TikTok, Instagram. Why not, right? That's what we're talking about today. And uh, have a great year of marketing. If you need help, uh, we are here for businesses, small and large, uh, to help level up your marketing. So whether it's if you just need us to help you with short form video content or to create an entire brand strategy, uh, we believe uh, that marketing should actually work and we're in your corner. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.